So it's really interesting to me that as we look at the Word of God and what it has to say about money and what it has to say about believers, a lot of Christians believe that poverty is piety and wealth is wickedness. But the Bible doesn't speak like that at all. In fact, the substance in the Bible, or in the world rather, that represents wealth, abundance, prosperity, and money, the substance around the world that's universally recognized is the substance of gold. And when we study the Bible, we have to, if we're going to come to a proper interpretation of biblical principles, we must use some accurate biblical interpretation laws. One is the law of definitions. We have, to, we have to look up the definition of each word in the passage if we're going to understand the passage. One is the law of context. If I come to an understanding of a passage, I must understand it in the context of, that it's written in as well as the context of the entire Bible. And then the last one that I want to talk about is the law of first mention. However something is mentioned, the first time God mentions it, that's his original design for the thing. Well, you know what's really interesting? Genesis is the first book of the Bible. And in the book of Genesis, the word gold is mentioned eight times. That doesn't sound like that big of a deal until you look at the fact that eight is the number of new beginnings and it's also the number of abundance. In fact, if you take an eight and you turn it on its side, that is the symbol for infinity. Aha. Uh -huh. But not only that, in Genesis chapter one, God used the adjective good to describe everything that he created and God saw that it was good seven times. The eighth time God used the word good, he used it in Genesis chapter two when he was talking about gold. He said, and there's gold in that land and the gold of that land is good. I did a study one time. I wondered how many times is gold mentioned in the book of Genesis? I was thinking, well, you've got to be in there at least a hundred times. And I looked it up, it's in there eight times. But here's what's really amazing. Every time gold is mentioned in the book of Genesis, without exception, it is always mentioned either as providence for God's people, a possession by God's people, or a provision for God's people, which tells us that the reason God created gold, wealth, abundance, is for his people. That's not an accident. In fact, the thing that really makes me wonder is when I see that there's gold in the Garden of Eden, and the gold of that land is good, it makes me ask, why did he put gold in the Garden of Eden? There are only two people. They're both married to each other. There's nothing for sale and nothing to buy. And yet God put gold there and made sure he told us it was there. Why? Because he wanted us to know that opulence, abundance, is the natural environment for his people. The book of Genesis, as it talks about gold, as it talks about wealth, as it talks about abundance, it only talks about it one time in conjunction with somebody who was not a child of God, and that was Pharaoh. And in that instance, it was, provident, it was provision for God's people. What do I mean? It says that Pharaoh took the ring off his finger and put it on Joseph's finger, and he put a gold chain around Joseph's neck. Wealth is what God designed for his people. If you don't believe that, go read Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 26, where it says that God giveth to the sinner travail to gather up and to heap up. Why? That he may give to him that is good before God. The Bible is clear. Abundance, wealth, and prosperity is something that God put on this earth for his children.